Welcome back one and all to the Weekender's Edge. I'm your host, Nick Simonson, outdoors writer with my materials online at NewsDakota.com and DakotaEdge.com. Well, we knew it. The other shoe had to drop sometime after this front half of winter being so, so mild and so, so nice for folks to get out there on the landscape and on the ice. The next three days will signal a change from what we've experienced into something a little bit more familiar on the Upper Plains, and that is cold conditions. Starting out on Friday the 5th, your fishing action will probably cease after today, starting out with a low right around the donut when you wake up with a high only getting up to around 7 Seven degrees. That wind will be out of the northwest at 15 to 25 miles an hour, dropping those wind chills down into the negative teens. So it'll be a challenging start to your weekend. If we had a pick of the weekend, this would be it because on Saturday the 6th, things get even colder. Lows will start out around 10 below in the morning with highs right around 5 below as those winds kick up again out of the northwest, but now 20 to 30 miles an hour on your Saturday, dropping those wind chills into super dangerous territory of negative 30 and lower. So Saturday the 6th be a good day to stay inside and maybe put some new monofilament on those spools and get ready thinking of spring fishing. On Sunday the 7th, more of the same as things get very, very cold. You wake up low, negative 15, high, not getting out of those negative double digits. That wind from the northwest again at 14 to 21 miles an hour will make things super chilly. Wind chills down to 35 below. So not the most pleasant weekend here to start off your February. You will have a lot of indoor time, tying up those jigs, getting those flies ready, making some tackle, preparing for and dreaming of spring. In that place where the law and the outdoors intersect, a judge handed out a 53-day jail sentence along with $6,250 in restitution. Court fees, fines, and costs, along with forfeiture of two firearms to Jacob Ashline. He stood accused of poaching seven deer, along with 13 other misdemeanor charges as part of a poaching ring north of Valley City about a year and a half ago. Tanya Duffy, state's attorney, commented on the efforts that went into it by the Game and Fish Department and the message it sends to poachers. It sends a strong deterrent message that not only does the court take these offenses seriously, but the state does as well, and that the state will pursue these cases every single time, and they will be taken seriously every single time. So I hope that it provides a strong deterrent from anyone who considers poaching. The Game and Fish Department um, and across the state have really demonstrated how passionate they are to conservation efforts and how hard they can work uh, when it comes to pursuing poachers and illegal taking of deer, or any animal for that matter, but in this case, just as applied to the deer. That was Tanya Duffy, state's attorney for Barnes County, commenting on the situation involving multiple individuals accused of poaching animals, spotlighting them, and generally violating the laws which govern the protection of our big game in North Dakota. That wraps up the news on the outdoors for this week, folks. Have a safe and enjoyable one. For the Weekender's Edge, I'm Nick Simonson. Good fishing to ya.